one of the things that I get asked often, since we're to plan with the Lord's will in mind, if the Lord wills, we will do in this and that. One of the things that I think women are guilty of is wasting their days. I, I, have, I have to say I have been grieved since the pandemic started in March of last year at the amount of women I know they're wasting their days. They are wasting their days. And ladies, we want to plan our days wisely. We're thinking about we want to plan our days. We want to redeem the time. The days are evil, right? And so I want to help you before we close up this lesson by, by giving you some 10 things, really, 10 areas on, on how to know if something is the Lord's will or not. Since we, we want to be women that plan our days wisely for his kingdom, um, I want to give you 10 questions to ask yourself if this is really a good thing for you to be doing for this day. Number one, is this thing I'm going to do build me up spiritually? You know, some things that women participate in are just robbers of their time. I often think of Paul's prayer for the church at Philippi. I pray that you will choose things that are excellent. Is this the most excellent thing I can do with my time? And if it's not, I wouldn't do it. Number two, does this thing bring me under its power? Will it enslave me? You know, Paul says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient, you know? Ladies, for instance, it's not a bad thing. I know women who like to shop. I don't care for shopping. But if you spend money on things you don't have, then shopping has brought you under its power. It's enslaved you. Number three, is this an activity that will create an appetite for more? Is this something that will create an appetite for more? A good example of this would be watching television. You know, in and of itself, nothing's wrong with watching television. I'm not a television watcher. But... It's a sin if the content's sinful, right? But ladies, listen carefully. If watching television creates an appetite for more for you to the point you can't turn the thing off, then it's enslaved you, right? It's become your idol. Number four, will this destroy my ability to think logically? This thing that I'm planning to do today, will it destroy my ability to think logically? Ladies, you know the number one thing that I'm to teach as an older woman to young women is to be sober-minded. Have their wits about them. Be clear-headed. We are a generation that is doling our mind with drugs, illegal I might say, as well as legal drugs. In fact, several years ago, a woman I was counseling told me her dog was on Prozac because her dog was depressed. Um, ladies, drugs, illegal drugs, and legal drugs can be dangerous and produce long term long-term side effects and destroy your ability to think logically. Number five, is this something that will weaken my intimacy with God? This thing I'm going to do today, will it weaken my intimacy with God? What does the Ten Commandments say? You shall have no other gods before me. So if something takes precedent over your relationship with God, ladies, that can be serious. I remember several years ago in my husband's former church, one of our a Sunday school teacher says this, said this, he said, whatever disrupts your communion with God or weakens your appetite for the Bible or dulls your concern for others must be set aside, right? So will this weaken my intimacy with God? Number six, will this thing I want to do cause me to neglect Bible study and prayer? Will it cause me to neglect Bible study and prayer? You know, bless our hearts. Women can get involved in all kinds of activities. They're not harmful. They're not even evil. But you know what? They'll do that over spending time in the Word and prayer. That's their priority. Ladies, I would encourage you, these are, these are evil days. They're tumultuous times. Your strength is going to be small in the day of adversity. If persecution comes, and I believe it is coming, you need to be in God's Word. Don't let other things rob you of meaningful time in the word and prayer. Sit at the feet of Jesus. That's where we need to be right now. Number seven, will this cause my body to rule over my spirit and soul? Will this cause my body to rule over my spirit and soul? A good example of this, many women today are obsessed with their weight. You know, some are bulimic, some are anorexic. Uh, some women will go to any means to maintain a certain weight. Ladies, that's sinful. It's wrong. 
God doesn't care about your dress size. He cares about your heart, right? And so sometimes that can cause us to rule over our spirit and our soul because we're so obsessed. And I know because before Christ, I was, I was anorexic. I know you can't believe that now, but I was. And I uh, didn't menstruate for a year, and my teeth were decaying, and my hair was falling out, and, and I was pinning a size one jean. So that tells you. And my, I had caused my body to rule over my spirit and my soul. Number eight. Number eight, will this cause someone else to stumble? This thing that I'm getting ready to do, you know, there's some things that I don't do that my we just, I don't want to cause my brother to stumble. It's not worth it. Paul said, when you sin against your brethren and weak their, wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I won't do it. So if this will make your sister stumble, your brother stumble, just don't do it or, you know, it's not that important, or do it in the privacy of your home, or whatever, but you don't need to do something that will cause someone else to stumble. Number nine, do I have an uneasy conscience about this? Do I have an uneasy conscience about this? Paul says in Hebrews 13, 18, we are confident we have a good conscience in all things, wanting to live honorably. Ladies, if you have a red flag about something, you're just in doubt, don't do it. If you have an uneasiness about something you've planned for today, don't do it. I cannot tell you how many women I have heard from since that interview several months ago that have said, you know, I listened to your interview about false teachers, and I knew something was wrong with that woman. I knew something was wrong with that woman. I knew something was wrong with that woman. I couldn't put my finger on it. I had a red flag. I had an uneasiness about it. I wasn't sure what it was, but now I understand. So ladies, even if it's a, you know, someone's sermon you're going to listen to, if you start thinking, ah, this doesn't sound so good, turn it off. Do something better, you know, with that hour. And then last but not least, can I ask God to bless this? Can I ask God to bless this thing I'm going to do today? And ladies, if you can't say, God, would you bless this activity? Would you bless this time with this person? Would you, you know, that would probably veto a lot of things that we're going to plan in our day, right? Probably not a good idea. So if you can't ask God to bless it, don't do it. So ladies, from now on, when you're wondering whether something is sin, ask yourself those questions. Try to determine what is God's best for you in your days. One thing we do know, the thing that you know to be right or good and you don't do it, it is sin.